Because what you receive in every service is determined by how far you focus. Is determined by your focus. You know, a man that wants, have you ever seen, if you watch football, when the ball is in the court of the goalkeeper, how does the goalkeeper behave? Does he, does he stand idle? No, I'm not sure. He just stands like this. He just pulls. Maybe his phone will ring and he will pick the cup at that time. He will be like this to catch the ball wherever the ball is coming from. That is how you should behave in this service. Be ready to catch. Your ball can come at any time. Like when the world was going on, when Mr. Collins was preaching, some of us, our words came, but we weren't vigilant enough to catch it. Hallelujah. Your word can just come anytime. So when your word comes, you just you catch it. Yeshua Amashir Lion of Judah Agunetim to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2 from verse 1 then we, then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea as the Lord spake unto me and we compassed Mount Seir many take note of the word compass Mount Seir many days and the Lord spake unto me saying let's verse Ye come, read it along with me. Ye have compassed this mountain. The Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. Do you know what are mountains? Do you know what mountains are in the realm of the spirit? Mountain speaks of high grounds. Huh? God has mountain. The devil has mountain. Mountain refers to altars. The Bible said in the book of um, Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 1, it said that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above the mountains. Go there. Isaiah 2 from verse 1. It said, and the mountain. And uh, the word of the Lord said unto Isaiah concerning Judah and Jerusalem. I am good. And it shall come to pass in the days, in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now, what does this really mean? How can a mountain be established on top of a mountain? Does it really make sense? But now the scripture is saying the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted huh, on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Mountains speak of heights, hills as well are heights. Hallelujah. And all nations shall flow unto it. The Bible said, you don't light candle and put it under a bushel. Right? You bring it out so that it can give light to the whole, the whole room. Yeah, in the book of Matthew chapter 5. So, mountain in, speaks of heights spiritually. And heights is likened to the altars that men have built for themselves. The Lord's house is not this place we are sitting the Lord's house is not this city, it's not this place. The Lord's house is the temple, you, yourself. And the Bible said in the book of Job 29, it said, as it is in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. That tabernacle is not a physical house you can see. That tabernacle is a man, you yourself, is a man, a spirit being, that have taken time to build capacity in you, to allowing the influence of God to operate through you. Hallelujah. So man, haven't you read this in the book of Zechariah? The Bible says, what is that mountain standing before Zerubbabel? No, who is that mountain standing before Zerubbabel? The Bible did not say what. It said who. Who means a man. Now, Goliath is a mountain. Hallelujah. That thing that you are battling with in life is said to be a mountain. But before that mountain can be conquered, another mountain needs to come on top of it. Hallelujah. That is what the scripture is saying. It says, and the mountain of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountains. Now, all those other mountains speak of all of the negativities happening in your life. 
and the mountain of the Lord we have got to be exalted above those mountains. Now, it's very possible for you to be a Christian and a Christian, and there are some things that have exalted itself above the mountain of the Lord in your life. Why? Because you have failed and has refused to lose capacity in you. Hallelujah. That is why you can be in a compound and there is a woman who is a witch doctor. And the woman is commanding so much authority to the extent that nobody in the compound can challenge her. Do you know why? Because the spirit she serves, and she's consistent in serving that spirit to the extent that a mountain has been built up. And that mountain is said to be higher than the mountain of every other Christian. Now, God doesn't build mountain for men. It is men that take their time to develop capacity. When you develop capacity in the things of God, it is said that you are building mountain. Hallelujah. Mountain refers to altars. An altar is not when you come and drop a seed on the altar here. No. That one is giving. That one is like sacrifice. The Bible said that Abraham, Benaka, so preketash. He said, Abraham laid the wood and he laid the altar and put Isaac on top of the altar. That means sacrifice and altar, they are two different things. That means altar has got to be built up first before sacrifice can speak. Hallelujah. So sometimes men of God confuse this whole thing. They refer to sacrifice as altar. I say, raise an altar for yourself. Go and give. No, that's not that, that is not altar. First of all, you would have to build capacity spiritually. And what is altar? Altar is priesthood. Fasting. Praying. Jesus Christ said this time in the book of Mark, chapter 9, from verse 29. He said this type of verse 39 or 29. He said this type goeth not out except by prayer and fasting. That is altar. That means there are some things that cannot go. It's not all about your giving that caused them to go. You would have to build altar. Build that altar. That altar you are building eh, is said to be mountain. When you are, that's why the Bible said that those that wait upon the Lord, what shall happen to them? Eh, they shall do what? They shall mount up. That mountain, that is mountain. You shall mount energy the energy of the spirit of god will, will begin to walk through you you will not be said to be an oracle of god one that speaks and things happen hallelujah so when the scripture said don't just quote this scripture out of context barrenness is a message and you know what that message is the devil is telling god i am i am i am, I am mounting on your mountain I am succeeding over your mountain. When you become successful, when that problem clears off, it is a message to the devil. And what is the message? God is telling the devil, my son has mounted on your mountain. Hallelujah. So mountain, let me tell you, Ma I cannot help you build your mountain. I can only tell you what to do to build mountain. Hallelujah. Now the Bible said, ye have compassed, according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 2, it said, ye have compassed this mountain for a long time. He said, now is the time to move eastward. Make progress. Advance. God did not say, this is how you are going to make progress. He said, move. God would only give you the instruction as to what to do. Then God is going to watch you do it. I have never seen God. Have you ever seen God pray for somebody before? Have you ever seen any man of God come and say, no worry, God is going to pray for you? The Holy Spirit doesn't pray for anybody. Hallelujah. So what the Holy Spirit does is that He helps you to pray right, pray right, but He doesn't pray for you. He prays with you. Hallelujah. So whenever you are speaking about mountain, and the Bible said, He has compassed this mountain long enough. He said, now it's time for you to move. He said, leave this place. Some of you, you have come past this mountain for a long time. It is time for you to move. Move away from this mountain. There are, some, now there are two types of mountains here. One is the mountain of the Lord. One is the mountain of the enemy. Either of these two mountains must be seen in a man's life. Either of these two mountains, that's why I've always preached, I said you must serve one thing. You must submit yourself to one thing. You, you can either submit yourself to God or you submit yourself to the devil. 